The Maronite Church is the Eastern Catholic Church on the seat of Antioch, in full communion with the Holy See of Rome. It traces its heritage back to the community that followed Maroon, an early 5th century Syriac monk venerated as a saint. Its liturgical language is Syriac Aramaic. Antioch was one of the most important spiritual cities in the East, and it was in this church where the disciples of Jesus were first called Christians, as written in Acts 11.26. The Church of Antioch was founded by St. Peter before he traveled to Rome. It prospered and became one of the five largest patriarchates, Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. To this day, the Maronite pat patriarchs take Peter as a second name in remembrance of his efforts in building the Church of Antioch, as he is called Patriarch of Antioch and the rest of the East. The questions anyone may ask here are why are they called Maronites and how did they become a community? In early church centuries, one serious division was regarding the nature of Jesus. The monk Maroon of the 4th century didn't like to be distracted by these divisions. He left Antioch and retreated to the wilderness of the mountains around Orentis River, not far from Antioch, where he dedicated himself completely to God. He found his vocation to preach the Word of God. By his wisdom and godliness he attracted people who desired to live with his spiritual guidance. According to the historian Theodoret, Bishop of Seir, Maroon was known as the monk who planted the garden of ascetic life and built a church dedicated to the true God on pagan land to teach the true doctrine. He wrote also that Maroon had already increased the number of saints in heaven and cured not only infirmities of the body, but applied suitable treatment to souls as well, healing this man's greed and that man's anger to this man supplying teaching in self-control, and to that providing lessons in justice, correcting this man's intemperance and shaking up another man's sloth. An additional sign of Maroon's godliness and wisdom, the powerful patriarch of Constantinople, John Chrysostom, wrote a letter in 404 A.D. soliciting his prayer. We celebrate the feast day of John Chrysostom on September 13th, and the Feast of St. Maroon on the 9th of February. St. Maroon's first disciple, Abraham of Cyrus, known as Apostle of Lebanon, realized that despite having some of the oldest Christian communities, paganism was thriving in Lebanon. In around 402 AD, Abraham set out with some companions to convert the Lebanese pagans to Christianity by introducing them to the way of St. Maroon. He rushed to Lebanon to a large village engulfed in the darkness of impiety. He lived in that village with its inhabitants and served as its priest for three years, guiding them towards the true God. Abraham founded an ascetic community with his companions in the Lebanese village. This village is Akura, near the Adonis River. The Adonis River, named after the Phoenician god Adon, who is not Greek, as commonly thought, was renamed to the Abraham River, and keeps that name to this day. After the conversion of that village, the entire region was converted to Christianity. After the death of St. Maroon in 410 A.D., his disciples and all the people who gathered around him to learn and deepen their faith were known as Maronites. In 451 A.D., at the Council of Chalcedon, it was decreed that Christ was both God and man, having two natures, one divine and one human. As loyal supporters to the decrees in the region, the Maronites were in conflict with the opponents of Chalcedon, who began to brutally persecute them. As a result of the dangers they faced, the following years began to witness a migration of Maronites into Lebanon and an increase in the rate of conversion of its population to Maronite Christianity. Attacks on Maronites continued into the 6th century. 
the monks of St. Maroon's Monastery addressed a letter to Pope Hormistus on February 10th, 518 A.D., to inform him that they were being constantly attacked. The Emperor Anastasius had sent an army against the Maronites, closing monasteries and expelling the monks. Some had been beaten, others were thrown into prison, and some killed. While on the way to the monastery, St. Simon Stylite, one of the St. Maroon's disciples, and 350 monks were ambushed and slain by the Menephysites of Antioch, even though some of them had taken refuge at the altar. The monastery was burned. Thus, Maronites sought refuge in the mountains of Lebanon to avoid further persecution, and they brought with them the skull of St. Maroon. There they were welcomed by the inhabitants of Lebanon. A Maronite monastery called Bet Maroon was then built, and the monks of the monastery had a profound devotion to their departed spiritual father. Throughout the 6th century of the Christian era, the disciples of St. Maroon continued to convert the remaining pagan inhabitants of Lebanon to Maronite Christianity, and together they worked the land, turning the rocks and tilling the soil to plant wheat, inhabiting the mountains and building their villages. In Lebanon they kept their freedom of faith alive and strengthened their hope in God, and added this prayer, O Lord, by the intercession of your mother prayers, keep away from the earth and its inhabitants all beatings of anger. Fade the dangers and disorders, prevent war, captivity, famine and epidemic. Have mercy on our weakness, heal our sickness. Help us, we oppressed. Grant rest to our faithful departed, and prepare all of us to a good fate, for the glory is yours forever. Since then, Maronites, Lebanon, and freedom became one.